Welcome to how to use the customer lifetime value calculator as found on this site clv-calculator.com As you can see up the top here it says follow the four steps complete the gold cells only so step one, step two, step three etc. So step one how much did the company spend on total customer acquisition? So you simply type in, oh well we spent a million dollars last year and how many new customers did we get? Oh, about there was a thousand new customers. That works out the blue cell numbers of customers per acquisition spend. So that's called the average customer acquisition cost. And little note here, if you have already worked out what that is, say so you worked out that it's five hundred dollars per new customer, you just put five hundred dollars here and set that to one customer and it works it out for you. Step two is to have your discount rate. I would suggest 10 or 15 percent is appropriate and as you change it the numbers further down will ca calculate. If you don't want a discount rate set it to zero. Okay but we'll leave this at 10 percent. Step three down here is to enter in the gold cells again revenues and costs. So how much money do we make in terms of sales revenue per customer? So think of all the products and services and fees generated by a customer and you type that in on a year by year basis up to year 10 and the calculation will keep going from year 11. So that number here is basically for year 11 and any subsequent years. So if it's increasing, say after a few years you do a big increase in in revenue and they jump up by 50%, I'll just copy that across. Okay, so we can see flat, 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 then a jump up. So this template gives you the flexibility to change revenue and costs on a per year basis. And let's say the last year ongoing, we get them up another little bit as well. This one here is what does it cost us to provide and generate that revenue. So if we're selling chocolate bars, what is the actual cost of production and and logistics of, uh, of a chocolate bar? If we're selling home loans, what's the, the cost of providing that money? Okay, so again, because we've had a jump here, I'm going to increase that a little bit there, all the way across there, and then jump that up as well. So I'll just put those those numbers in. So as you can see, I'm doing that is recalculating underneath. What we have is a, an average gross contribution. This is basically, we sell a product, what does that product cost? So that's the margin or the profit we're making from, from products and sales, product sales of, uh, for the organization. Down here we've got two other cost factors. This is because we're holding customers, we're trying to, over time, approach them with special offers and try to encourage them to, to buy more products from them. So again, if we're some sort of financial institution, we would frequently have offers for you know, a credit card or a home loan or something. That costs money to provide. Okay, So we're doing that on a, all of these we're doing on a per customer basis, which it says up here. So how much do we spend on a per customer, a customer we have? trying to uh, sell them something or to try to make them remain loyal which is retention so I've set that at ten dollars let's say because we had the big jump here in year six in revenue we actually spent a, a, a bit of money in year five so I'll put that as fifty dollars that was a one-off and jumped up revenue which continued and that jumped up there too so maybe we spent a little bit more there as well so again what's happening is the numbers down here are, are recalculating automatically. This is the, I've called this the net profit contribution. So this is our profit from selling things. And we deduct any costs that we have from um, upselling, cross-selling, uh, loyalty type issues. Here I've got what is called a negative cost. Word of mouth acquisition cost serving. That is where our customers and and uh, people who like our, our brand and our products will promote our 
products and services to other people, perhaps through social media or recommendations on TripAdvisor or something. And as a result, instead of paying $500 to acquire a new customer, they're actually being delivered for free. So that the stronger the brand we have, the more likely it is we're going to have people recommending us. So because it's, we're not, it's not a revenue source, we're actually saving money. We'll put this in as a negative cost saving. So I'll take it to zero. You can see the profit per customer is, is $40. When I add that back at minus $5, it's $45. It goes up because an existing customer is actually adding value for the organization by bringing in new customers. So the customer is actually more profitable. Okay, so that continues over time. And then step four down here is your retention rate. How many customers do we keep from the previous year? I've set that as flat, but you don't have to. You can just add um, changing retention rates over time. I'll just put some in randomly. Okay. <clears throat> Everything in blue is calculated for us. Okay. We then go down to the output. In this case, the way I put the numbers in is calculated as a loss of uh, customer value. So basically what that means is we haven't recovered that that five hundred dollars we look at the uh, the net profit contribution you can see over, over that 10 year period and going into year 11 onwards we've actually brought in six hundred dollars or five hundred ninety five dollars of, of uh, net profit but much of that is is out in the future in, in years five years plus so it's actually not overly profitable for us um, it also calculates the average length of lifetime in years, so four and a bit customers, four and a bit years of customers. Uh, the average return we've made on that $500. So of course we've actually lost money. Um, that's showing is we're losing 10% a year on that money. Um, these two numbers here is our return on marketing investment. Okay, so basically. Um, we've got this is our, our key number here discounted average profit so profit per customer after the discount rates been taken into account okay so you can find out all about these bits and pieces on on my website but this is just explaining how the mechanics of the spreadsheet works okay so if I if I bring this one up you can see that it's it's n22 okay so 226 minus the $500 acquisition costs means we've lost 55% of it there. Um, this one here is after the discount rate, we've actually lost 70% of our initial $500 at risk. And payback period, because it hasn't been paid back, we've never recovered that $500 in today's money after discounting, it shows at zero. Let's assume we were able to pick up customers a lot cheaper and change that back to $100. Okay, $100 acquisition costs. We go down here and we now see, yep, we've actually made money on that $100. And we're $45 better off. Lifetime hasn't changed, but we've made 22% average return uh, on that $100. And as you can see, we've, we've turned that around. So we've made, in this case, we've turned 100 into 145, which is a 45% increase. And if we don't consider the discount rate, we've turned 100 into $126. So everything you need is on on the, the website up here, all all the detail. So good luck with it.